There are many people who feel that they deserve certain things because they want them. They haven't earned them. This video is going to be a little harsh. It's going to talk about my expectations for myself, expectations for you, because just because you want it doesn't mean that you deserve it. You get to keep what you earn. There are many people who want to make a lot of money and they want to hack it. They want to somehow automate it without actually putting in the work. My life doesn't work that way and I'm quite sure your life doesn't work that way. So this video is gonna be a little abrasive. I'm gonna give you the facts on how to make money in these United States of America. And it's not going to be what you think. It's not going to be a linear line like do X, Y, do Z, and there's money that comes out. No, it's not going to be like that. So brace yourselves. Welcome to Every Man is a Millionaire. What's going on? This is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we build better people and we teach them how to make money. If you like that, you should subscribe. If you're feeling that, you're definitely going to want to subscribe. Now, let's get into this video. It's going to be very, very interesting. I want to relay a few experiences that I witnessed. They weren't my experiences. I was an observer, so to speak. But it leads me to think that people have certain things twisted. Let's really just jump into this. Both feet first. I was with some co-workers back a long, long, long time ago. When I had a job. Those stone ages. And I was listening to these people talk about vacation. There was a new girl. Young girl. Attractive girl who just got out of school, lived at home with her parents, had only been on the job two weeks, and they were talking about vacation. She said she deserved a vacation because she'd been in school, she'd been working, and she just felt she needed to let off a little steam. When I first heard it, I was like, that sounds pretty cool. And then she picked a really nice spot to go to. A few weeks later, we, you know, after she gets back, because this was when benefits were good, because you used to work for a place your vacation was front loaded. She comes back, get to know her a little bit better. Come to find out, parents paid for her schooling. Nothing wrong with that. She lived at home. Mom and dad bought her a car, and she only her only job was to go to school, which was only three days a week. And I, I looked, and this was this was a while back, and I looked, and it's like, you remember when you're saying you deserve the vacation? I have a full time job, I have this a part time job, and I'm married with kids. If anybody deserves a vacation around here, it's me, right? And she's like, no, we all struggle on our own level. That stayed with me. It stayed with me a long time because I thought it was utterly preposterous. I thought it was ridiculous. Recently, I was listening to someone or observing some Facebook posts, and it was a similar theme that I deserve this and it wasn't a vacation. It was bigger. It was much bigger. I deserve success. I sat back on the sidelines. My jaw tight. I didn't want to say nothing. I've can put myself on a social media policy where if I cannot add value to the conversation or subtract value from the conversation into my life, I leave it alone. Which, using that template, keeps me out of like 90% of the stuff I want to jump into. It kept going, kept going, kept going. Then someone posted something, and I was like, oh, that right there meets the criteria. So I went on, and I, I wrote this. 
It's not what you deserve. It's what you earn that will chart the course in your life. At that point, I was called a Republican. Just to be clear, I'm not a Republican nor a Democrat. I'm an independent thinker because when you really look at it, a lot of bad policy was passed on both sides. So I get called a Republican. And I go on and on and on and on. And it was just, I deserve, I deserve. See, this is the thing about success. Success is like that really, really special dog. If you feed the dog, you take care of the dog, you don't abuse the dog, the dog takes care of you. The dog comes to your funeral. The dog is in it to win it with you. But if that dog like, where Fido go? means you're not earning Fido's love. And that's how success is. Now, I'm not talking about the success where you see someone that has things that you want. I'm not talking about that success because many times people look at the accoutrements of success and that's what they want. They don't want the long hours. They don't want the sacrifices. They don't want to do any of that stuff. No, 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 no. I am going to work smart versus working hard. I'm not going to work too hard because that's I'm too good for that. I'm too good to work hard. I'm too good to work hard. There's got to be some easy, breezy, cover girl way to do this and not really stress myself. Because I deserve not to stress myself. So when I hear that, you know, I deserve this. It it, it just usually not 100 percent, but usually it is part of a mindset that reeks of entitlement. When you start feeling entitled to things that you did not earn you're going to be frustrated for a very long time in your life because one of the immutable laws of the universe of nature is water seeks its own level. That's why rich people hang out with rich people, poor people hang out with poor people. And when I say rich and poor, it's not always about money. There are some people who are mentally rich and there are some people who are mentally poor. And it usually starts with the mindset first and everything else is secondary. That is why that happens. And energy draws each of those people together. They may not be the B, you know, they may not be the BFF, you know, best friend for life, but they operate on a similar plane. When you start looking at someone's stuff, whatever it may be, family, wife, husband, children, car, house, whatever, and you focus more on that other people, the stuff that other people have to the point that you haven't identified what you want out of life, how you plan on getting it, what are your skill sets, what do you bring to the world? If you've not had that conversation, but your lips are stuck out because of what someone else has, You are not boo-boo the fool. You are a damn fool. See, boo-boo got some redeeming qualities, but a damn fool does not. Frequently, I tell people in my groups, I don't watch a lot of television. I don't watch a lot of, I don't listen to a lot of radio. I've got XM in the vehicle. I choose my content very carefully because It's called programming, as someone left in the comments on another video, for a reason. You may have thought processes. You may think, I'll give you you a perfect example. Give you a perfect example. You're led to believe that the more money you make, the more money you spend. Think about that. I'm making more money, so I got to spend. No, you don't. No, no, no. You don't have to spend it. But we live in a consumption-based society. You are fed these messages. 
If you spend more money, you're helping the economy. If you spend more money, you're supporting your fellow Americans. If you spend more money, blah, 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 blah. You are induced to do something that's actually detrimental to your financial well-being. You don't have to spend more money. I know people with money that really are thrifty. Extremely thrifty. I shop in Goodwill. And I have no shame about it. I have some friends that's like, oh, you use you you use other people's you put buying their stuff and go, you damn skippy. I used to be in the storage auction business for years. I mean you I didn't go to the mall. I didn't buy anything retail. And I'm talking soap, I'm talking toilet tissue, vegetable oil. I mean, there were so many things that we had at those units that it completely revamped and changed my mindset on stuff. Because really, if it's not in your spirit, your soul, or your body, it's stuff. It's all stuff. And you have people who are giving up the most critical things of their being for stuff. It's just stuff. Some of it's nice stuff, some of it's bad stuff, but at the end of the day, it is stuff. So that whole false notion, the more money you spake, the more money you will spend, was said by Bullwinkle or some other idiot. Another thing, relationships are hard. They don't have to be. They really don't. If you have a plan for your life and you have a plan for your relationships and you create the proper energy in yourself, you will draw perfect people to you that will not be necessarily friction free. Because when two people disagree, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That can be a growth thing. You draw, you will draw more appropriate people into your sphere of influence. And that is an inward journey, not an outward journey. But you hear these notions and you hear them over and over and over again. And in your mind, they start to go on autoplay. Yeah, I just got here on this job. And that woman who's been here for 24 years and used to scrub the floors and worked her way up to the top, who now has eight weeks of vacation, I deserve to have what she has because she's got what I want. That kind of bullshit. That kind of crazy cra And I see it all the time. Recently, here on the YouTube universe, there are people who would uh, insult me, berate me, lie about me, and try to knock me off of my stride with some bullshit. And I said it a long time ago. I said, well, the reason that these people are doing these things is because they want to do exactly what I'm doing, but they can't quite figure it out how the Negro figured out how to do it since they are superior beings other than, than the Negro. And they couldn't figure it out. And they tried. And they tried and they tried. And it finally came out. They started doing the very thing that I said. That is part of of the entitlement mentality. That is part of, I see some guy on YouTube speaking and for some reason, people like him. They follow him, they comment on his videos, but I'm not getting that kind of love, but I deserve it. I fucking deserve it, cause I want it. <laughs> I deserve it because I want it, not because I earned it, because I want it. Now, let me break it down, pull it apart, put the pieces on the table for easy digestion. When you look at someone and you want what they have with little regard, if that's something that you should even have, the results are usually dire. F frustration, resentment, wasted time, poked out lips, 
these are the things that happen to people who do those things. Because when you start to understand yourself, it makes it easier for you to understand others. There are many people walking around that have no fucking idea why they do the things that they do. They just say stupid shit like, it's just me. No, fool. It's either A, you were culturally socialized to behave that way. B, you're a psychopath. C, you just evil. Because it's all a choice. When I go off on YouTube and say some crazy stuff... Or the time that I went into a forum and cussed people out. They didn't make me do anything. I chose to behave that way. That's on me. Anytime you say you made me do X, Y, and Z. You are a weak bitch. Because no one can make you do anything. You choose to do stuff. Unless you're in a particular sexual relationship where you're dominated. Then that kind of goes like that. But if you are regular peeps, and most of you who are listening to this are regular peeps, no one can make you do anything. It's all a choice. It's all a choice. And what happens with this, I deserve A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, simply because I wanted, is part of a socially induced epidemic of bullshit. You worked hard all week. You deserve a vacation. Maybe you don't. (laughs) Maybe you don't. Maybe you were at the office all day, but you really didn't work that hard. You want a vacation. And one of the things that creates a serious, serious problem is when you have people, and I had it explained to me because there was this article that we're talking about gentrification and how the people of the neighborhood who are being gentrified have resentment and angst against the people who are moving in fixing up the places and driving up the property prices and driving these people out my take on that is a lack of community a lack of cooperation because I want you to really think about this If you had a community of 50 people, just 50 people, that's all, 50 people, and those 50 people got together and said, you know what, we need to make our community better. Once again, just 50 people. If those 50 people donated $100 a month, that's it, 100 bucks a month for a year. $60,000. 60 thousand dollars 50 people sixty thousand dollars if you own a house you know you can put a roof on the house you can put a new bathroom in the house you can fix a lot of things for sixty thousand dollars so if this community of people got together and said hey we're gonna put our money together Oh, and on the weekends, we're going to do police call. If you're military, you know what that is. If you're not, you don't know. Police call is when you spread out in a line. Well, you don't spread out. You you draw your information and you walk the property and you pick up all trash. You police the property. You pick up the cigarette butts. You pick up trash and debris. That's why military properties are pristine and look so clean because someone's cleaning that up. So we're going to police the property on the weekends and we're going to pull out the dead trees and we're going to get the trash out the street. And every year we're going to take that money and fix up one of our neighbor's houses. So they do this. And then someone says, wow, that's a beautiful house. It's fixed up. Property prices go up. Then it's like, okay, we got more people in the community and they go to the new people and there's 10 new people that come in. And it's like, look, this is what we're doing. We're excited. And then the people, the 10 people are like, Whoa, oh, yes, we like this. That's why we moved here. We saw that kind of community energy. It excites us. You know what? We're going to do $200 a month because we believe in what you're doing. And on and so forth to the point where the community pot is big enough that they're their own bank. See, this is the deal with community. People are like, well, you know, the black community or the white community, 
<sighs> the community is when you have school systems, you have banks, you have commerce, you have the hospitals, police force. When you like when you have a city that secedes from a larger city and they put their own police force, they put their own city council together, they get a hospital, they that at that point they become community. Community is much bigger than just the people. It's the people, the infrastructure, the economy, and the finance. So if the people in those neighborhoods that are going through gentrification actually got together, and I just did this with 50, say you got a community of a thousand people and they do that. Within three or four years, they become an economic force because they have assets and money. So the question is, why don't these people feel like they should do that? Because they feel they do feel that they deserve to have someone else come in and fix their problems. They feel that they deserve a better life. They feel that they deserve better treatment or a voice on the city council. They feel that they deserve it. Where the people who don't have that mindset, namely, usually gay white males or lesbians or people who get smart and say, damn, a lot of people are going in that community and they're fixing stuff up. If we get in now, we can make some money. Those people feel like they have to earn it. And what happens? The people who feel like they have to earn it do better. It's one of the requirements of getting a house from a habitat. You have to work on your house. You have to be part of the process. They, all these folks don't come from all over places and just build a house. You are part of it because that creates ownership. That creates a sense of pride. That creates a sense of, yes, this is important. See, that's what's really messed up with the I deserve mentality. Because it's based on folly. It's not based on fact. It's not based on character. No, 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 no. That stuff does not need to apply. It's like, I want this shit now. And if I don't get it, there's going to be some repercussions and consequences. Because I want it. Didn't mean I earned it. And I speak of the mindset because when I was younger, I had that mindset. I didn't understand how the world worked. I had no clue how the world worked. I was just like... I want it and I should get it and I don't have it and I'm depressed. I'm depressed because, you know, everyone else got nice stuff. I don't have nice stuff. And I didn't really learn that the nice stuff was a byproduct of accomplishment. It took me a while to really connect the dots and see that if I accomplish certain things, I got those things that I wanted because I earned them. I give you another group of people that I feel are treated unfairly, and some people are going to totally disagree. I used to work in the medical industry. I know a lot of doctors. I have seen the process of becoming a physician. I have friends who are doctors. It ain't no joke. And people like, they work and they make all that money. So do you know what a doctor gives up to become a physician? You know how much sacrifice goes into that? And then once they get there, you got to protect your ass at all times because you lose your license. You're out of business. You can't do it no more. It is extremely stressful. You have people who want miracles. It is an extremely rewarding profession. And it's an extremely stressful profession. There's a reason that a lot of doctors are divorced. It's kind of hard to be married to someone you never see. It's pretty challenging. Some people pull it off. A lot of people can't. And when I talk about this and say this, people who are not doctors, who have no friends who are doctors, who are not intimate with the process of becoming a doctor, it's like, they just need to be happy. They're making all that money. Pfft, whatever. Shit. I trade places with them in the heartbeat. I don't know if you would, if you know what some of them go, especially surgeons. They make a lot of money, but they earn it. And you see that class hate because a lot of this is rooted in class warfare. And people are like, there's no such thing as class warfare. If you see somebody 
that has something you don't have and you make immediate assumptions about a person you've never seen, a person you don't know based on the fact that they have stuff that's nicer than you, that is class warfare. It's envy, it's jealousy. Give you an example. I, I did a video like where the rich people live. And it's on my other channel. It might be on this channel. And people are like, oh, rich people are depressed on drugs. All their kids are skanks. And in some cases, that is true. In most cases, no, it's not. <laughs> I want you to understand some things. Everybody has a choice in how their life will turn out. You have a lot of choice unless you get hit by a train or something. For the most part, you have choice. And many people who became part of the rich class, and there's several stratas to the rich class, they're still good and decent people. Now, there's a group of them that are diabolically evil. The more It seems the richer they are, the more evil they are. Kind of crazy, but that seems to be the way. And you have folks who hate on those people who look at them with disdain and disgust because they had the audacity to accumulate some financial wealth. I don't know when it happened because I used to be a hater. I didn't drink Haterade. I had a, a daily subscription to a gallon of Haterade and I was just chug a chug. <laughs> Give me some, give me some more. Oh, oh, can we get this intravenously? Can I open up a vein and we just go ahead and go for direct tap? One day, I'll stop being a hater. I, I'm not really conscious of the process, but I remember I was walking somewhere and this guy, he had a burgundy 911. Really, really nice. And that's a Porsche. And I looked at it. And I saw him, and I was like, hey, nice card, man. He said, oh, thanks. I was like, yeah, that's for me. And that's what I said. There was no hate. There was no jealousy. It was like, I had nothing but love for this dude. And I was like, it was a nice card. And it was just the beginning of many good things because when you harbor hate and resentment that's based on nothing other than what you think that you deserve, that's a miserable existence because... Every time you walk out the house, you encounter people that have things you don't have. You are one upset puppy wetting up the floor. You're going to send your ass to doggy be obedience school because there's something wrong with you. You are just pissing all over the happiness of other people because you're scared and you're cold and you don't understand how the world works, which is not a problem. The problem is your janky ass doesn't want to learn. That's the problem. I, I'm telling you, I was there. I mean, I had the Hater Nation t-shirt. I was subscribed to I Hate Everybody magazine. I even had a special pass to the uh, annual hate concert. It was like, you just come in there and you put a name down like, I hate this motherfucker. I was all up in that. I, I was in Hateville, secret handshake, the whole nine yards. Then one day I grew up. Nobody owes me a damn thing. They don't owe me an explanation. They don't owe me love. Don't owe me money. Nobody owes me a damn thing. I got to get it. I got to earn it. I got to make it happen. And that's part of taking ownership and accountability of your life. Because when you start to earn stuff. And the big example is when I wrote that first book, which was a bitch. I got headaches. I got carpal tunnel, all kinds of stuff. And at the end of the road, when it was done, it was like, oh, really? I was so freaking happy. And it came from doing and earning. And this is something that I took away from the storage auction business because I saw this scene over and over again. People were trying to solve issues with stuff. And they would buy units that were full of brand new stuff with the tag still on it or new in the box. And this, I'm talking from clothing up to refrigerators. 
Brand new stuff in the storage unit. Clothes with new tags, shoes never worn. Just trying to feed that void that they don't even know why it's there. They just know that they're trying to keep stuffing in. Say, I'm going to put more stuff in there and put more stuff in there. When you get to the point where you get over your love affair with stuff, you can go into the mall with a credit card with $150,000 limit, $10,000 cash in your pocket, be in there for four hours and walk out and not spend a dime. Because you make your decisions based on data, desires, and information. Not, oh, it's cute, I'm going to get it. Oh, it's on sale, I'm going to get it. There was a, a Black Friday sale of my microphone, the Blue Yeti. It was like 60 bucks. people were passing around. I have a Blue Yeti and I looked at it. And I sat back and I was like, hmm, let me think about this. It was 60 bucks. It was a screaming deal because I paid 150 for mine two going on two and a half years ago. Screaming deal. Good deal. Great deal. But I went through my mental catalog because I am going to get another mic, but it's going to be a really high. It's going to be a higher quality mic. You know, if you, you, you if you get the blue, media, then you can't go wrong. It's a great mic. It works well. Proven device. But I'm going to want to have better quality. There's some other things I want to do. So I'm going to get a different mic. So it really didn't make any sense for me to just buy the Blue Yeti just to buy it. You know, maybe if I was going to resettle it later, you know, buy like 10 for 600 bucks, then sell one by one when the price goes back up for like 120 and double my money. That would have made sense. But to buy the mic when I knew that I had planned for other stuff, it didn't make any sense. That's how I make my buying decisions. I mean, it took me six months to buy my television. It took me, um, shit, two years to get my current vehicle. Because I kept looking at information. I kept asking myself. Because there is nothing worse, in my opinion, than to spend a lot of money on something. And then, mere days later, you're like looking at it going, uh, blah. You know? And this, I mean, that's just me. That's just me. I don't buy stuff. And then have buyer's regret because I put myself through the process of, do you really want it? Do you really need it? Does it fit into the framework of what you're doing? Does this fit? Does this make sense? And if it doesn't meet those requirements, I don't buy it. I may still want it, but I don't buy it because it doesn't make sense. But if you have stuff thirst, you have, I deserve it. Or you do what's retail shopping therapy because you feel that you deserve it. You will find yourself wasting a lot of money on stuff that you really, at the end of the day, if you had taken time to explore your desires, you would realize you really didn't want it. I mean, I go outside and I'm pulling up my you know, walking in my vehicle and I smile because I love that shit because it's like it's what I wanted. I truly wanted it. Newer versions came out. I didn't like them because that's not what I wanted. I was like, well, it's newer, so I'm going to get it. No, that's not how I operate. And start when you start making decisions like that based on what you earn, based on whether it makes sense, your life becomes happier. And once again, it's your life. You know, I have expensive-ass taste. I make no bones about that. I will drop. I'm that person that would drop 5Gs on the watch. Yep, I'm that guy. I will do it, but it's a watch that I've been looking at for a long time. And also, I know that I can resell it. See, that's another part of the storage auction game story for me. It taught me that I can buy stuff, enjoy it, and really have it the have the experience of ownership for you know, a few days up to a few years and resell that stuff and get most of my money back. Or in some cases, if I buy really well, make money. I bought a Herman Miller Aeron chair off of Craigslist. I talked the guy down to 250. It was a size C. I sold that sucker for 450 two and a half years later. But that that's that's part of that storage auction thing. That's it's like the it's 
it's a way to do stuff. I'm not going to slay you or talk down to you because you want nice stuff. Because I like nice stuff. Everyone likes nice stuff. I'm going to talk down to you because of the way that you go about getting it. If you want that trip around the world, or, well, actually, that's not going to get you around the world. But say you want to go to Germany first class and you save up to five G's to get that ticket. Ain't mad at you because you earned it. You planned for it. You made it happen. And if you're really slick, you will apply for American Express Platinum Card, buy the plane ticket on the platinum card because you got the cash and you're going to be able to pay that sucker off soon as the bill comes, you get a companion ticket. So really, that $5,000 gets you two tickets, business or first class. So you can do this. It's just how you do it. And you won't do it that way if you feel that you deserve it or if you go into the mythology of, Money ain't a thing. Just throw it in the bag. Well, price tags don't matter, you know. Balling out of control. I'm balling out of control, baby. Balling. Blowing money fast like a stupid ass fucking fool. That's what that is. Because if you look at the group of people who talk about that, when they get my age, they don't even have a car that they own outright. They don't have a house. They don't have a 401k. They don't have investments. They don't have nothing. But they had that $10,000 night in the strip club. They had that, um, you know, $300,000 birthday party. They had that special trip on the chartered plane that cost 50 G's just to get it there. Then they spent another 150 G's for a week in some exotic location. They got that experience. But looking at a lot of these older entertainer people who did all that stuff, they don't look too happy. I have not heard one say, you know, it was worth it. It's usually, man, I wish I had managed my money better. I wish I had put some away. I wish I had started the business. That's what I hear. See, that whole notion is, is you're trying to buy happiness. And happiness is something that's earned. Happiness usually is a byproduct of some type of action. Once again, it's something you earn. And when you start looking at how can I earn this versus I deserve this, you will notice something that will just absolutely fascinate you. When you start saying, I need to earn this, I need to earn this man's love. I need to earn this woman's love. I need to earn this money. I need to earn the right to be a business owner. I need to earn the right to be a public figure. When you go from that position of, I deserve to, how can I earn this? You will see some amazing results in your life because you're going to approach things from a different posture. You're going to ingratiate people to you. People are going to start pulling for you to win because you were like, what can I do this to earn? What can I do to earn this? What, how can I serve you? How can I make this happen versus I am special and I deserve this? Yes, I do because I look good. And my mama told me so. That's why I deserve it. Nothing else. No other reason. No other reason required. I just want it and, you know, I deserve it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I deserve it. Yep. <sighs> Nobody's come up and given me this shit yet, but I deserve it. <laughs> you see this frequently in many areas of life, but one of the most popular areas that you see this is in terms of romance and love and relationships. I know from personal experience, when you meet a woman and it's like, and she's got to be the right woman. I'm not going to lead my dudes astray like any woman. No, 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 no. That is a recipe for disaster and resentment. But once you have vetted her and she's the right woman and you go about trying to earn her love, you be getting blowjobs at 6 a.m. because she's so crazy about you. So it's a different process. It's a different way that you do stuff but if you feel that you deserve it and you don't have to work for it 
and it should just come your way. And then you're like, I deserve this. It ain't coming. My mama told me I'm special. My daddy told me I'm special. My report card looks like a, a whole bunch of A's with the legs shot off. But, you know, that's okay because my daddy and my mama and my grandmama and Miss Jones and Mr. Hankson and, and Miss Jackson, they all told me I was special. They told me I was so special. They told me I was great. But the rest of the world, they didn't get the memo. And then you have this life where you're 50, 60, 70, 80, looking back, going, what was I thinking? Why did I make those poor ass decisions consistently? We all make bad decisions. That's just part of the human condition. But to do bad decisions decade after decade after decade after decade is a sign of a deeper issue. It's a much deeper issue. So today, when you're listening to this message, this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a sheet of paper, whip out your iPhone, get your iPad, something. Go to the notes section. And right at the top of the section, how can I earn the life that I want? And then start filling it out. Think of the things that you can earn the life that you want. Because see, Many people have a misconception about me. I don't work for money. I work for freedom. That's one of the reasons. Like, I put something in my group about that. And, you know, because I use the word wealth and I use the word rich frequently. But I do a poor job of that sometimes explaining that when I say rich... I'm talking about spiritually rich. I'm talking about emotionally rich. I'm talking about great health. Great health is one of the richest assets you can have. Ask anybody that's been seriously sick and it changes you a lot. And I'm talking, you know, there, there are so many different forms of currency and wealth and you can get them if you earn them. If you, you really start looking at it from an earning proposition versus I deserve it. I'm special. I deserve it. Oh, baby, give it to me. Give it. Damn, the laws of attraction ain't working. What the fuck? <laughs> There's more to that than people let you know. Uh, the laws of attraction, that's like a 12-step program, and they just gave you step one. There's another 11 steps that you need to do to manifest that stuff. And you do those other steps, it happens much quicker. I can say this, because this is a personal experience. I had notebooks with goals written down, and I didn't really come up with a plan on how to make them happen. But I went back when I, you know, when I moved and I was looking at stuff. And so many of them had accomplished. And I like start remembering. I was like, damn, that was like three years for that to happen. It was like 10 years for that to happen. But I just wrote it down. I'm just telling you the simple fact of writing it down will make it happen. But the timeline's going to be real jacked. It's going to be seriously jacked. But if you write the goal down, you come up with an action plan. You come up with an intention plan. It becomes some amazing stuff. But see... By writing it down, you have to think about it. You have to put forth some mental energy. You have to put forth some effort. You have to contemplate. You're not just sitting there like Al Bundy on the sofa with your hand in your pants just going, I deserve a better life, Peg. Yeah. I mean, seriously. It is as complex as you want it to be and it's more simple than you ever imagined once you get on the right track. So, that's what I want you to do. Take that iPad, your iPhone, your Android, sheet of paper, pen. If you're outside, if you're writing in the dirt, do what you got to do to make it happen. And really think about that. What can I do to earn the life that I want? Really think about that. Focus on it. Plan on it. Dwell on it. And then the next time you see somebody that has some shit that you want but don't have, you have something else to look at. It's like, yeah, do I really want that kind of house? Let me think about it. Let me go to my plan. It's like, 
Well, it's just me, so I really don't need a 10,000 square foot house. And actually, the utilities on that's like 1,200 bucks a month. Oh, fuck that. No. Uh, let's crank that down to 3,500 square feet. <laughs> When you really start going through the progressions and looking at the steps and really thinking about this stuff, sometimes a lot of these things that you think you should have, you really don't want to have. You you have them because you've been induced by society and commercials that you should have them, whether they make sense for you to have them or not. I'm serious about that. All right. This is Glendon Cameron.